are we confused? I think we might be confused. There is some conflicting information going on in the economy and in the Phoenix real estate market. So I'm going to take you guys through that today because uh, I feel like there's just a little bit of back and forth. We go one way, then we go the other. You get data one way, then you get data the other. So let's talk about it. We're going to start by talking about the economy because it's a big week economically this week because the CPI data comes out tomorrow. And that's usually a big deal, but it's even a bigger deal this week because the Fed gave us some or at least the markets were encouraged at their last Fed meeting. And uh, then we got this crazy jobs report. And now it seems like the uh, markets have kind of been playing chicken with the Fed, thinking mm, they're not going to be as aggressive as they say they're going to be because this um, has been, some of this data has been positive. But now I think that tomorrow when the CPI information comes out, if it doesn't look good, markets are going to freak and that's going to affect interest rates. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. The expectation for the CPI or the consumer price index tomorrow is supposed to increase 0.5% from a month earlier. So if we stay consistent with that expectation, um, it's probably a good thing, but if anything goes off of that expectation, we may see markets react to that. And again, that's what will then affect mortgage interest rates. Um, you know, a lot of this uh, they're talking about here, we expect the monthly change in January's CPI index to blunt the three-month trend of disinflation. So the Fed had come out and said we were seeing disinflation. That was really good news the last time um, they met. However, after that, uh, there was just a, a different reaction from the market because that wasn't the only thing that Jerome Powell said. He also said they were going to continue to hike interest rates, remain hawkish, but the market's kind of reacted like, woohoo, uh, you know, all all is good here. And, um, and then we got that crazy strong jobs report, which is not good news um, for the markets. And so it was, it's been kind of a back and forth. So tomorrow's going to be really telling. They also continue to say a rise in gasoline prices, slowing momentum in goods inflation and still robust gains in service prices should boost both headline and core prints. That should bolster market bets that the Fed will have to raise rates to a higher peak than currently priced in or than indicated in December's dot plot. So basically they're saying after the news tomorrow of the CPI, it's very likely that um, we're going to get a little bit more serious about rate hikes again. So keep an eye on that because we'll see what happens. Now, next thing, let's talk about home prices. Here's where home prices are dropping the most. This is a Yahoo Finance article. And of course, Phoenix is called out in this. We're always hot topic on these kinds of things. When we were seeing home prices increase the most, we were on that list. So, you know, I got to call this out because Phoenix got uh, called out here in this article. Um, so where home prices are dropping the most, we're lumped in here with a lot of the West Coast, San Francisco, San Jose, Seattle, Phoenix coming in here at number four and uh, saying that the uh, change from the 2022 peak is about 13.4%. Uh, that's roughly where we're at. I think we're closer to that like 14 to 16% now, but it depends on how you're really measuring things. Of course, we're in there with Austin, Texas, Las Vegas. So um, pretty much most of the uh, the West Coast, uh, big cities in the West Coast is are getting called out here. But what's interesting is they're talking about how home prices have come down, but it's still not affordable. Um, then it goes on to talk about, um, I'm trying to find the spot here, according to Fannie Mae, Senior Vice President and Chief Economic economist Doug Duncan, home prices will drop 6.7% over the next two years, but there won't be a catastrophic decline like the one we witnessed during the Great Recession. Goes on to say, talk about affordability. The main concern is affordability. National payment to income ratio is 34.8%. Um, while that's down from 38.4% in October, it remains above peak levels seen in 2006 prior to the Great Recession. Um, and goes on to kind of break those numbers down. So it's interesting that we just came off the heels of that Goldman Sachs analyst um, or analysis of uh, how catastrophic these home prices are going to go down. And now 
Uh, we have another news piece saying that they've fallen, but it's not going to be that catastrophic, only 6.7%. So different opinions everywhere. Again, if you didn't see my video on that, I talked about that a couple weeks ago. And uh, last Friday, I kind of compared where we're at today to a balanced market and how much we've changed since the peak. So you may want to check those videos out if you want a little bit more info on that. Now we have Redfin saying buyers are returning to the market and sellers are following. Now I've talked a little bit about this in my videos that we've seen a lot more buyer activity here in Phoenix, but you guys, a lot of this is really hinging on where interest rates are. We've seen uh, lowest rates in the last four to five months. Those took hold at the beginning of January. Last week was not a great week and uh, we'll see what happens with the CPI print. So this could totally change. Um, but as of last week, this article came out, more home buyers are coming off the sidelines. Um, home buyer demands kick, uh, ticking up, pending home sales posted their smallest monthly decline since September during the four week period ending February 5th. Um, earlier this week, the Redfin home buyer demand index um, hit its highest level since September, rising 21% from an October low, but down 25% from the same period last year. Of course, that makes sense. Our activity is much, much different. Um, so again, they call out mortgage rates. They ticked up last week. This is all referencing last week, but they're still down a full percentage point from the late 2022 peak. Um, and we'll see, you know, like I said, rates are a big factor in this. We saw some relief in it. That's what brought buyers out. But if the, these rates start to go back up again, it will probably take the wind out of the sails and we'll start to see a slowdown. Um, I think, I don't know, I guess it depends on how drastic the change is in these interest rates. Um, but this goes on to talk about, usually we have a good idea of where the market's headed by Super Bowl weekend. Um, and this year it's just a little bit more uncertain. And I would agree with that. Uh, we started out much stronger than I anticipated and most people anticipated. So to uh, think that we can predict where we're headed, I think is foolish just because things are just so uncertain and a little bit volatile right now. So let's talk more about what's going on in Phoenix in terms of this volatility and confusion. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you're getting any value from this, I would love if you would hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, the Cromford Market Index. Uh, if you are new here, this is an index created by the Cromford Report and I'm a subscriber to it. They look at supply and demand factors in the market and this is just looking at Phoenix Metro. So this is taking into consideration all of the main cities in Phoenix and um, they measure this by an algorithm that is proprietary, so I can't break it down for you, but mainly we know that supply is obviously the inventory on the market and demand is gonna be about uh, the number of contracts being accepted and that kind of thing. So we're at 121.2. Anywhere between 90 to 110 is balance. Anything above 110 is considered a seller's market. And I've been talking about this being a seller's market for the last mm, three, four weeks now, I think, because we ticked up over 110. Now we are solidly over 110 at 121.2. Our demand has continued to grow. This was in the low 70s, and now this is approaching 80. Again, if 100 is normal, we still have about 20% below normal demand. Um, and then on the supply side, that's even lower. So if 100 is normal, we're looking at about 35% below normal for supply. So again, this is these are just the numbers that indicate a seller's market. Um, I will be very clear in saying that we're not seeing a frenzied seller's market. Last year, when we talked about seller's market, this number was 450 or 420. It was somewhere way up there. That's a whole different scenario. So when I say seller's market, I'm saying technically speaking, because we have more demand over here than we have supply. But we are starting to feel that. I've been in a couple multiple offer situations. I've seen days on market start to go down. So we are seeing some strength come back into the market, uh, but we are nowhere near the seller's market that you may be thinking of when you think of last year. So let's break down what's going on in every city specifically. We do have a lot of green arrows. Green means good for a seller. That means that that city improved if you're a seller when we compare month over month. 
um, this week, month over month. Hopefully that makes sense. So Fountain Hills and Paradise Valley and Cave Creek have lost some steam. It seems that the Northeast Valley is kind of uh, deteriorating, although they are leading the uh, CMI with some of the highest CMI numbers. Fountain Hills at 164 and Paradise Valley at 142, even Cave Creek at 126. That's still above the uh, average for Phoenix Metro right now. But we are seeing that the Southeast is starting to strengthen because we have quite a few cities on here in the Southeast area with some large gains. So like Tempe at 31%, uh, Queen Creek at a 28% increase, um, and then Gilbert 25%. So if you are a buyer right now, the Southeast Valley is gaining some momentum. It's going to be a little bit more challenging for you as a buyer than it was a couple weeks ago. If you're a seller in the Southeast Valley, get excited because things are going your way. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it really depends on the house and all of those kinds of things, price range and whatnot. But generally speaking, that's the trends that we're seeing with these cities. Um, also the middle of the market seems to be most favorably affected by recent trends. So Avondale, Glendale, Phoenix, and Goodyear are all seeing an increase of, uh, more than 25%, at least 25% or more. Um, so Again, a lot of this hinges on mortgage rates. I wouldn't be surprised if in two weeks we come back to this and we see more red arrows because we get bad news for mortgage rates this week and all of that slows down. But as of now, the CMI is pointing to strengthen the market, pointing to uh, you know improvement in prices potentially, or at least stabilization in prices. Uh, and that's that's all that we can say about this. But then... What else do we need to look at? We need to look at accepted contracts because that's showing our demand and that shot off like a rocket at the beginning of this year. Um, and now it's starting to go down a little bit. So this was last week. We saw a little bit of a uh, downward movement, tiny but still something we need to keep an eye on. Um, before that, we were going nowhere but up since January started. And the reason accepted contracts is important is because this is showing buyer demand. This is showing that buyers are out there writing contracts, making deals with sellers. So that's activity, the more demand. And if we don't see an increase in the inventory that we have on the market, that's what will then put us into that seller's market situation. So we got to keep a close eye on these accepted contracts. We'll see if this continues to trend down. So I'll watch that and hopefully next week we can talk about it again. Also wanted to share a little bit about um, list prices because I was just curious on where list prices are and <laughs> I find this funny. Okay, you guys, let's look at that list price. Uh, the only way I was able to find it in Cromford was average list price per square foot. Usually I look at median um, uh, list prices, but we're going to go this way. But look, the pink line is 2023 and the yellow line is 2022. Why are we matching 2022 in terms of our list prices at the beginning of this year? We all know prices are lower. <laughs> um, so if we look at the median price year over year, we're down about 6% from last January. Um, yet sellers continue to list their house on pace with where we were at the previous January. So um, take that as you will. Uh, but again, you know, a little bit more conflicting information. It seems like at least sellers have come down to um, come down to earth a little bit because this was much worse last year. But, um, you know, we're these list prices should not be on pace with 2022 levels. Um, and if you are a buyer right now, obviously closed data is lagging data sales prices, but where we stand today is about 6% lower than we were um, last January. And so take that into consideration as you're writing your offers and knowing that most sellers may be pricing at the same point as they were last January. So 
Let's talk about rental info as a quick bonus. I know a lot of you like to know rental stuff and I haven't shared this in a while. So just real quickly here, our rental rates, this is the median lease price by quarter, um, has come down as of Q1. We still have quite a bit of Q1 to finish up, but we're at 2000 30 as the median uh, list price or lease price by quarter for Q1. Uh, it came down from 2,095 in Q4 and 2,195 in Q3. So this has continued to trend down. Um, if we look over here, let's see, in Q, let's find Q1 2022 right there. We're at 2,110 a year ago. And today we're at 2030. So that gives you an idea of how rental rates have changed and softened. Um, I don't know if this is going to stay uh, as we continue, if this is going to stabilize or if we're going to continue to see it going down. It's certainly made some moves downward as we've started this year and, and ended last year. So that'll be something to watch, especially if you're an investor or if you are um, looking for a rental as well. So all right, guys, that's all I have for today. As you can see, things are a little bit confusing. We've got some information that's positive, some that's negative, some nationally positive, some locally negative, and vice versa. So it's really hard to figure out what's actually going on in this market right now. But all we can do is try to predict the very near future based off of the information that we have today. So if you're considering buying, selling, or investing, I have some helpful links in the description below. You can check your instant home value. You. you could search my MLS for homes for sale or just set up a time for a discovery call with me and we can talk through your situation. I can try to help you out as best as possible. So hope that was helpful. Thanks so much for joining this week. I'll be back later this week with some more market info and of course another Monday market update next Monday. I'm Caitlin McKegg with the Desert Dreamers team.